So here is our data science with Python blog. The key project of our blockchain DAO is the PinSafe decentralized Pinterest. And we recently added um, an EVM support. So here you can actually follow the link and um, discover the, the posts, decentralized posts. You can store your ideas as NFTs and share them. This is one of the posts, which is generated by, um, image generated by AI. So going back to our blog, here is one of our latest posts. Ethereum security data collection ideas. So here we describe what is data collection. And data collection is a systematic process of obtaining observations or measurements. Data gathering enables you to get the first hand knowledge and unique insights into your research challenge. Whether you whether you're conducting experiments for business, governmental or academic objectives. Author methods or objectives may vary across the fields. The general data collection procedure is basically the same. And in this in this article we describe how to select a research topic, study technique and resources for high quality gathering on topics that include security, compliance, and authenticity on Ethereum blockchain. Determining a correct research question is a key component. And what is more, even more important is that creating a strong research question is a crucial when beginning a new research project. It's an important step in the research process because it will direct the research activity. A well-written research question possesses several characteristics. It should have a precise definition and be free of jargon. The query needs to be specific enough to lead your investigation in the right direction. It should provide a summary of an important question or subject you wish to address through your research, whether it be lit literature, literature, uh, literature review, an experiment or a theoretical exercise. It must be addressed within your constraint time frame and with other resources that are available. Now we switch uh, towards a research methodology. The most challenging and perplexing choice is the optimal research approach. Choosing a research technique is essential since it will determine the kind of methods you use. If you use the right research approach, you may gather the necessary data and achieve the study's objectives. In general, there are three types of research. Exploratory research, which helps you to clarify a problem and may lead to a development, or development of hypothesis. A confirmatory research, which involves conducting empirical tests to verify a, possibility, a possible theory or a hypothesis. Consequently, it frequently employs quantitative research. The mixed methods technique, which is used to develop a perspective theory or hypothesis and then test it empirically. In our case, if we want to work in particular on Ethereum blockchain, we need to gather quantitative data to test a hypothesis. Since we want to measure precisely and um, gain a broad statistical insights, in case if we want to investigate concepts, comprehend experience, or gain in-depth understanding of a particular situation, we would collect qualitative data. And if we want a mix of it, we would um, gather a lot of data. So uh, now we will discuss the data collection methods approach that is most appropriate for your research based on the information you want to gather. A quantitative approach is used primarily in experimental research. 
while qualitative methods include ethnographies, focus groups, and interviews. Both quantitative and qualitative methods can be used when collecting secondary data from surveys, observations, archival research, and more. To begin with, archival research involves accessing records from libraries or data online to comprehend current and historical events, conditions, and practices. To better understand people's impressions or thoughts on a topic, we recommend to employ focus groups. Besides, a survey involves distributing a list of questions to a sample of people online in person or over the phone in, or in order to understand the general characteristics or opinions of a group of people. Finally, seek out pre-existing datasets that have been compiled from sources like governmental organizations or research institutes in order to evaluate data you cannot, you cannot directly access. Moving to data sources. So first, we advise to assemble the archival research on your topic, which in this case is Ethereum blockchain security, compliance and authenticity. And it might encompass investigation into historical events and outlining their significance. Ethereum blockchain use cases are not limited to speculation and trading. Meanwhile, decentralized exchanges and other decentralized applications face regulatory scrutiny that involves taxation, audit, and fraud detection. For instance, the Ethereum-based smart contracts can be examined for compliance in, relations, in relation to OFAC sanctions. Which involve, um, which is essentially an office of foreign assets control. There are a number of sanction programs, and um, the information is always updated here on the official uh, US Department of the Treasury website. There are a number of um, sanction sanctions lists, one of which is the national uh, national sanction list. Uh, which are available in a number of formats. So going back to our blog. Here are some notable articles that, uh, that we have assembled on um, that cover anti-money uh, anti laundering, compliance and um, latest trends relationship to Ethereum security. One of the articles that we've included in this post is the building ML compliance for NFT marketplaces, which goes into details on how to effectively how to protect your NFT marketplace from regulatory um, effort, I guess. Yeah, so this article actually explains how to prepare for future regulation, how to cash out receipts and how to earn trust, among other things. So this article goes into details on how to actually protect uh, the NFT marketplace that you are building. The second article is the um, explanation what is KYC what is AML and what are the difference between them it's also from the same site so it's pretty well researched and it also includes the KYC AML in the more traditional industries and it also includes the case study so this is pretty well researched article so the next topic is the um, OFIC sanctioning number of 
group your dresses that are connected to um, a Russian ran uh, ransomware group called the US election interference that is connected to it as is basically stated in this article so the um, US based NFT trades and marketplaces must now ensure that they are not engaging with these sanctioned entities or transaction or transacting with um, sanctions assets I guess so this is pretty interesting development and as you can see the most amount of assets that were sanctioned in this instance is actually held in the USDT followed by um, other ERC20 tokens this latest development connected to Ethereum is the ban of Tornado Cash and the drama that is connected to the imprisonment of one of the founders and the whole um, ban on the um, on their infrastructure so the tornado cash was actually um, used by the no north korean hackers uh, that are called as lazarus group where they um, so in one instance they hacked the um, x infinity bridge and uh, tried to use tornado cash to launder the proceeds here is basically the description of the hack this large amount of money was stolen from x infinity so this article uh, describes what is the tornado cash what assets it provides and um, what assets it's transmitted i guess and um, the connection between the groups and what it means for the tornado cash to be banned with the ethereum assets and usdc addresses the um, ofac blacklisting some of the um, addresses the, um, <laughs> the vandals the web3 vandals decided to send uh, ethereum from tornado cash to the people they did that they probably do not like and one of the people that received um, the assets through the, uh, the, the tornado cash was uh, jimmy fallon and shaquille o'neal so i guess people try to ban them from <laughs> from using crypto or just put them in the sanction list it can uh, this prank could cost up to 10 million dollars in imprisonment in an attempt to improve its reputation uh, tornado cash actually tried to use the chain analysis tool and its services the services of the company that that has the same name of the firm chain analysis to block crypto wallets sanctioned by the u.s office of foreign assets control the, here is the description of what they've tried to do and the links to the suitable articles however the, the um, yeah the US Treasury has actually blacklisted Tornado Cash and the software is now actually illegal I guess so the, uh, the same North Korean group that we've previously discussed was also connected to the um, hack of the Harmony Horizon and uh, there, there is a huge bounty offered on these hackers so this is a pretty interesting trend and we'll see how it's how it will develop in the future interesting in this case is particularly the involvement of the tornado cash and how it's it's also helped hackers to launder the funds
So in our article, we also provided available online data sources on Ethereum, blockchain. So one of the sources is actually the, um, the, the um, list of the crypto addresses related to Lazarus Group, which is a North, North Korean hacker group. And we've also provided uh, the update to it, to that list. So in addition, we provided a detection of illicit accounts over Ethereum blockchain study. Contains a data source and an actual study with a description of what model they've used and what are the results of that study. We've provided some uh, data sets from Statista and the premium, da uh, premium data sets that contains more data, as well as we've provided some links to the Ocean Market, Dune Analytics, and Google Data Set Search, as well as Kaggle with available notebooks. And we've also found uh, OPC API NFT sales a Python script um, that you can use to monitor what happens with those sanctions, addresses and their NFTs. You could also collect the data from the data uh, Dune Analytics with Python official library. And we've also provided a number of services such as Parsic to monitor the um, crypto assets in real time. And uh, we also found the uh, Twitter USDC blacklist bot that monitors the blacklisted accounts in real time by USDC. So in summary, data, data gathering enables you to get first-hand knowledge and unique insights into the your research challenge. There are three types of research, exploratory, confirmatory, and quantitative. Choosing the right research approach will determine the kind of method you use for gathering the necessary data. If you aim to test a hypothesis, measure something precisely, or gain large-scale statistical insights, collect quantitative data. If you have several aims, you can use a mixed methods approach that collects both top types of data. We also provided some references and related posts.